Hi, here with more Space Engineers, and today we are catching up with what's been going on. <laughs> oh, I've been busy. I've been very, very busy. All right, so when we were together last time, we were talking about aft portion being engineering. We're going to have some thrusters in between, and we were talking about the mandibles. So I've actually, I, I know we've gotten some feedback for and against the mandible idea and some variations on it. Um, so while I was waiting for feedback, I went ahead and just started playing around with it. Let me show you what I'm kind of thinking. And yes, those are atmospheric thrusters. Um, one of the things we had talked about early on with this design was you know the usability of it is it something that we'll have only in space will we have it going down to planets um and i kind of want it to be able to do both and so what i'm doing is building into it a little bit of functionality and having the mandibles that we're talking about here actually gives me the ability to have a little bit more um control over what we're doing as far as thrusters are concerned and uh, usability because space engineers some of you may or may not know well, i know some of you know some of you may not um the way that force vectors are applied to mass is that it's always applied to the center of the grid so you can have something out here on this very in the very edge of this um pushing to the left or pushing to the right or whatever direction up down whatever right and it's always applied to the center of the grid mass so there's no benefit in say like rotational force by having something on the extreme edge any more so than it is having it in the middle of the build because of space engineers um, design to do this it means we have a lot more freedom on where we put uh, thrusters and maneuvering jets and those types of things. Mainly because of the fact, or I should say, this allows us to really reconsider the way that some designs are built. So a lot of, a lot of folks will build around the idea of making things look not just aesthetically pleasing, but realistic in some of its regards. Um, so it just depends on what you're trying to build. And I think with something like this, where we're talking about this thing is going to be basically a, I don't want to call it a giant brick, but it's going to be um, brickish. <laughs> we're not going to lie. Because uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to massage the shape and we're going to do a lot of things as far as like Griebling Pass. And um, we're building it with the idea that there's going to be three layers of external armor which will allow us to create positive and negative spaces and shapes, um, playing with the textures on and everything. But what I want to do is try and figure out a way to make all of this work together and still make it believable. Um, what I'm thinking here is, as you can tell, we've got eight lift, large atmospheric thrusters for lift. And I actually may be increasing those. But what I'm thinking is on this area down here, when we get to the point where we're doing the armoring, um, I want to have these basically hidden, at least from below. Um, so each one of these, let's see here, each one is a three by three grid, right? And then it's, you know, like five tall or something like that. So what I'm thinking is that we've got the three here and then one, right? And then we have three here. I'll show you. So it's like one, two, three, and outer edge, right? So that's one, two, three, outer edge, outer edge. So if you notice, we've got a little bit of overlap. Um, so what I'm thinking is we'll end up mounting a hinge at the center point of each of these, right? And we're just going to use these as placeholders. And then on the other side, and this is going to be done on the uh, the actual armoring area 
and probably be integrated in some way with the armoring area. But what I want to do is have a hinge in here so that you basically end up with a panel that covers the thruster. Uh, and then when you're ready to use it, you open the hatch and everything frees it up. And then when you're ready to, like, so when you're in space, you can actually close it off and not have to, you know, have these open ports here. Now, we're not to the point where we're ready to actually implement that. But I wanted to show you what I was thinking and one of the reasons why I think that you know, I am going to keep the mandibles and I may change up the layout on these a little bit. So I'm because of the fact that we have so much space in here, I may double it up. So you end up with seven thrusters per mandible for 14 lift thrusters. And we'll have all of them have either large, uh, either a large hatch covering each row or individual hatches covering each thruster. We have enough room that we can actually do that in either way. So I, I kind of like the idea of having each thruster with its own hatch, because I think that would look kind of epic when you're on the ground and it's like, okay, if we're ready to take off, you see all these hatches open. So, but yeah, that's my, that's my thought process on it. And then back here, what we've done is we've started looking at putting in some of the maneuvering thrusters as well as um, space-based low grav, no grav, um, lift and propulsion systems. So what I've done is gone ahead and mounted in a bunch of lift thrusters here. And then you'll notice these patches here. Uh, we're gonna put an atmospheric thruster in here as well. And again, it's just to help balance the look and feel of the ship. Uh, but I'm not quite sure if it's going to work out the way I want it to back here. And so I'm, I haven't placed them yet. But that's what we're we're looking at right now and i've been basically prototyping some things just trying it out and seeing if i like the general feel of it and the general look and that's one of the ones i'm not sure of yet so like again once we get a little bit further along and we're ready to start dealing with the uh, the lift systems and propulsion we'll definitely come back and revisit all of this okay so what are we going to do today well, we have an engineering room that has no engineering in it. We now have a closed off airlock, which I need to pipe a vent into at some point. And then we have the rest of the ship. So we have the lower area, the hallway, nothing's really changed here. Uh, we have the stairs leading up and then we have the gallery area now. We did actually, as you can tell, do some changes in here. <laughs> we now have windows in here. I went ahead and put the doors in. And the reason I went with the offset sliding door in comparison to the normal sliding door is that I was having pressurization issues with the normal sliding door. So I was testing this for tightness and I couldn't get the door to go airtight. I had panels on the side and had the, the door framed in and just it was having various bad O2 detection issues. So the slide, the offset sliding door seems to be better for air tightness uh, without having to do a whole lot of reworking of the vehicle or your build. So that's what we're going with, at least for now. Now we do have these on both sides. I went ahead and put a uh, a divider in here just a little separator so when you're coming in you don't see the batteries part of this is that in the case that you do have hostels come in um, it makes it a little bit more difficult if they don't know the layout of the ship they'll come in and it's like oh okay it's a wall and you come through and it's like eventually you'll notice that yeah the batteries but the idea is that it does offer just a little bit more basic protection you know in the case that you have a stray bullet go through the doorway uh, I mean, it's light armor blocks on small grids. It's really going to only stop a bullet. <laughs> now, the benefit is, is if we come through here, let me close this off. Close this off. You know, and I've already talked about it. We have it. So we've done a little bit of testing. Not 
airtight. We can pressurize. Aha! So we actually can now pressurize uh, multiple areas of the ship. So, which is nice because that means we can, can uh, have a little bit more control over what's going on in our build. Uh, so if we close everything off in here, these vents will pressurize this room as will the vent in here pressurize the med bay. Uh, I do need to figure out some more spots for pressurization, uh, but we it's one of those, we'll get there eventually. And I think we're at that point where we probably should start looking at it. And I'm thinking because we actually have space for it i may think i'm thinking we may actually do it through here because we've already got the conveyor network up in that area specifically for the upstairs uh for the upper gallery stuff because we have the vents here and all of our piping is running under all of this flooring put you there um and what I'm thinking of this is we'll just we'll tie into that line and have it basically drop a line down. And it's fairly easy to do. Uh, right about here, I think. Yeah. Basically, we'll just end up putting a uh, conveyor junction in there and then run a line down uh, somewhere. Let's see if we do. We need to figure out where exactly that goes because I think I ended up doubling up some of this. We'll see. And we'll basically rinse and repeat this on the other side once we have it. Oh, look at that. That's actually where I needed it. Okay. Uh, so let's go to. I don't know how to. Oh, okay, yeah, I've got plenty of parts. Okay. So let's go conveyor. Let's, do we just want to do a conveyor vent? I think we may just do a conveyor vent. Because if we do a conveyor vent, we drop that down, knock you out. Let's grab conveyor block and we can then do that and that should take care of what we need all right and then over here it's also going to be around here I think Did I? There it is. Alright, so we can backfill all of that. I'm not too Energy critical. Not too stressing on that. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. We're gonna go ahead and cr crank that out there. Let's go grab some power before we take Stupid amount of damage for no reason. Do I have O2 on me? No, I don't. I need to go grab some oxygen out of the other system really quick. I'll show you why. There's been some changes to the stuff going on down in there. Alright, so you are actually there. Okay, so if we go don't want sorters, I want conveyor block. Check to make sure, yes, that's going to go down one, hopefully. Ah, crud. Come on. Right. 
and one more. Right. Then we're just gonna close that off. What I'll probably do is come back and um, put a panel in here or something so I know that that's where I need to go to fix stuff in the future. Um, definitely things that we need to keep, keep in mind. All right, so let's talk about the hangar space for a second. What we've done is we put a bunch of oxygen tanks in and welded them up. We have vents out here. All of these are tied together and they're actually being fed by the conveyor junction, uh, the medium grid or the medium sized conveyor tubing junction on the back of this. Uh, so these can actually be filled and drained as we need to. And then afterwards here, we have four isolated oxygen tanks that will basically be used to depressurize the, the entire uh, hangar area. And what we'll do is we'll, they are patched together as well. And we'll uh, probably get these up to about 25-30%. And then let the room pressurize. And then when we are uh, working, we'll be able to depressurize everything and just use the tanks for storage. And then those become um, effectively a, uh, an emergency supply if we need it. Because having it here, we can always, you know, cut off one of the vents and run a uh, run ah, and run a line <laughs> down the down the hangar space if necessary to patch it into the actual grid so that's one of the reasons why i do tend to keep at least one or two oxygen systems off the grid um just because you know it's always nice to have a a backup supply if you need it just in case all right and i think that's everything that we have going on right now okay so all of that said and done you now know what's going on with the ship we've gotten some of our updates in this is an area that we can place more batteries if we need to um, also has the potential to be an area that we could have like if we need to uh, no because if we do anything with it it'll be extending this out I could see doing something like this and basically making bringing this floor out for a little bit more room low. all right let's go uh, in here really quick because I am actually I am actually out of oxygen let's get our system recharged Oh, we're going to go into the O2 system. Let's drop off that. Thank you. Makes it nice and easy, actually. And let's move some of you guys down here. All right. Oh, I'm just going to drop everything off. I'm going to grab a bunch of those, grab a few of those. Uh, I don't know if I actually need any more of those, but we'll grab a couple just because we can. Right. And then let's uh, get ourselves charged up. Okay, so what are we doing? Well, let's work on the reactor room at this point. And I'm thinking what I may do this week is instead of having pre-recorded videos for Wednesday and Friday, I may live stream. It's been a while since I've live streamed. Um, part of the reason for it is, is that I'm trying to get a lot of stuff done on the ship. And I mean, we're, we're really trying to get a lot of stuff done and I'm using a lot of, um, a lot of off camera time to fill in some of the stuff going on between videos. And I'm, I'm thinking, maybe better to do longer live streams and then we'll do a uh, like or maybe do a, a highlights video that's you know, 15 minutes long or something but yeah so that's that's you know potential idea for this for the rest of this week i i don't know yet we'll know on wednesday <laughs> right. we have all of our stuff 
Right. Okay, actually, before I go any further, you guys, come here. I'm going to turn Bob off for a little bit. And like I said, I, brought, I really should go ahead and just put a button in for that, but... So if we go with the idea that our engineering area is basically this space, right? Everything within these walls. This ends up being a rather large space, even with large uh, reactors for the small grid. Because those things are not overly large, right? So you have a regular small reactor, you have hydrogen engine, and you have a large reactor. So what I'm thinking is that we have a hybrid system, right? You end up with, I'm trying to think, do I want to do these vertical? I don't want to do them horizontal because I'm really, I'm really tempted to do these as a freestanding thing. So how many blocks did we do this? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which could work in our favor. Two, three, so two, three. Basically for us to walk around in here, we can't build any closer than that. One, two, three, yeah. It's actually two and a half blocks, I think, is what we can get away with, but it's fun. Yes, yeah, so we can we can technically squeeze through here, but if we do this, we not. We can, we just kind of catch up in there, huh? i to make sure, huh? Yeah, so we can, we can kind of squeeze through there. But I don't want to do that. I want... I want a room that we can actually walk around. All right, so with that in mind, can we get away with this? I mean, I guess we could go that way with it. So if we do this flip you over because the connectors are on the end two three and then we yeah three do something like that that gives us hydrogen power on this side So one, two, three, one, two, three. So there, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, we go. Now what I'm thinking for this side is that we have our reactor array. And one, two, three, four. That's four. That's five. So we end up with something like that. Two, three. So do we want to go? I mean, we could actually go uh, three, four, five. I mean, and that is just a ridiculous amount of hydrogen power. I think that's I think that's well overkill. 
Honestly. How much did this put out? I don't remember. Uh, let's look at the engines here. Okay, so those put out 500 kilowatts each. That's 10. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, ten. So, oh, so that is five megawatts of power burning at a ridiculous rate of ice consumption. Well, hydrogen, I should say, which means we also have to put a hydrogen tank on board, which might actually be what we do here. Oh, let's see here. Let's get rid of you for it now. Your large grid only. You fit in here. Can I get you to fit in here? You're going to cut in uh, quite a bit. All right, how far over are you actually cutting in if we do that? Oh, we just need to take the wall out, which means I can put windows on the interior. Yeah, so if we do that... I could get two hydrogen tanks to a side. Oh, uh, that could work. That could work nicely. The question is going to be, is am I going to have the clearance I need to put the atmospheric thruster in? Okay, so let's go ahead and take this out for it now. And I think I want to keep, do I want to keep that in there? All right, let's see how this works. Bob's not, uh, Bob's not active, so we can actually take our time and plan some of this. Right, so if we do that, I need... So you're going to have to come up with one. Because of those thrusters, which means if I do that, I need that to go down one. Which means all of that's going to have to come out then if we want to do this. Alright, so those drop down one, which is not actually a problem. Um, I've got an inventory full of stuff, though. I mean, I have the the cargo on board the ship I could deal with, but let's just go ahead and drop all that. I don't want to turn Bob on to pick up parts and have him start welding stuff up, so... Alright. Now, if... We do this uh, little thruster, thank you. Okay, so we had it mounted there. We need to bring it down one block. Oh. Which means I need you. I choose you. Panda Chew. Okay, there you go. Sounds like a nasty candy, doesn't it? Right. Two, three. Four. Uh, we did four of those? Yeah, we'll go. And that allows us to go. Let's go ahead and load those up because we're going to. We know Bob's going to do it anyway, so you may as well as do it on our terms and not his. Three, four. 
Yep. Okay. All right. And then what that means, all of this comes out. You can stay there. Get this off. Man, I just destroy things, don't I? Right. <laughs> now, did we take that all the way back? No, okay, that's, that is what we wanted to do. All right. And then that's a wall there. Okay, so now what we're talking about here is you guys are going to have to come out. And we'll do... Go ahead and do that. And see how many tanks that we can get in here. Because if I can get two tanks in here... Oh, vertical because we're going to be looking at them I might actually do these vertical all right so let's do a quick count here because I think these are five by right one two three four five yes they are five by can I one two three you're in the hallway damn all right <sighs> all right what I was thinking was is if that wall was a little bit thicker we could have it um, go down through there and I think this one's gonna run into the same problem yes yes Uh, what I was hoping was to be able to run piping through the wall, but we can still do. So what I'm thinking here is we do something like that. Like that, and then we have it we can have it run down. So the conve uh, the conveyor piping will go from here down and under. Those two will be tied together because they are already tied together. And yes, I know I'm almost out of power. There we go. Quick. Run, run. No energy. <laughs> uh, all right. That gets us. That gets us the beginnings of a power room. Now, I do want to have reactors in here. I don't want this I don't want the ship to be completely hydrogen powered. I mean, it would be kind of funny to do that. Um mainly because of the fact that we have so little well, compared to the amount of uranium that we have at this point. How much uranium do we have? It's been running for a while. So I'm, I've got 2k, so I've got 7k refined. And about a little, almost 600k left. Five and three quarters. 500 and, 500 and roughly 75k of ore to continue processing. And we still have the rest of that node to dig out. So I think we're okay for uranium. Oh, you know what I could do? Is if we want it to be really funny. is I could truncate this, put a large reactor on the end of it, and then have a bridge over to another grouping. That could be interesting, actually. So what that would entail, let's take this back to just four. And you are on that stack. 
So we do the same on this side. So you end up with four like this, right? Bring that up. And then we go large reactor, which would actually, yeah, so that would do large reactor, large reactor, on this side, large reactor, large reactor, and then we cap this, Let, oh no, it won't match up. I want it to. I mean, I guess we could go get away with. Because what I'm what I'm kind of thinking here is something like this. But then we have to get these guys piped in, which I'm not sure we're going to be able to do. Well, we're not going to be able to do that. I mean, I guess I could flip these on their side. So that, because that's eight where we are. So what we could do maybe is that and that so what we then have we end up with 10 hydrogen engines four large reactors all feeding through the same network and then we can put our power displays here so you have actually you can have our computer system here oh that could work really well Oh, okay. I think we're gonna. I think we've got an idea here for what we're gonna do for this. Now, what we do is we have you come through. We'll run because there's nothing running under there. Can do something like that take you out this will be line will come up from here oh this could this could be a very interesting thing let's get this out And then what we could do, oh, come here, is you end up with something like this. Here, and then again, that's gonna be where the line feeds in. Cause I mean, we don't even have to run it under. We could actually just run it off of here down across the floor or across the ceiling to feed it, which gives us a little bit more uh, detail in here as well. This could be, this might be something. This, this might very well be something. Right. Okay, and then you good modules be there so we then to bring in a tank tank one tank two and then again we have you know what runs up into the roof and that actually allows us to do that to there we 
because what we can do is we can run this down. And if we have a pipe mod that allows us to uh, put T-pipes in on small grid, we can actually have both of these being fed off of a single line. I think I like this concept. And you're going to be just regular blocks. We may put a window or something in here somewhere, I don't know. Uh, definitely going to have vent ventilation in here. But this allows us to get in. We'll have some lighting in here. I think for this area, we're going to have you guys actually block there and block there. And let's go something like this, maybe. I'm out of there for a second. Actually, no. I want. I want those. Because if I do that, I can do. I want it to. Because if I get one, two. Four. What do I have that allow me to wrap that into something? Let's see here. Oh, that could be. If we do something like that, and then that allows us to basically run this. And then from here, we can do that into the regular blocks. Would we want to run that? And then we could just something like that. But I need to figure out the turn that I'd want there. I mean, we could just we could just go simple with it. And you then go like so. All right, so let's see what this looks like. So that's under there. I may change this up. I haven't decided yet. I know we're, I'm really trying not to get it too far into greebling at this point, but right, so if we do that, and then you are basically. Two and three, and you're gonna come back this way. You're gonna go that way, and then to there. All right, let's turn Bob one. Let's get him started up.
Sorry about that. Hey, look at that. More spam calls. Sorry about that, folks. All right, so let's get... <laughs> I may or may not remember to remove that, but we'll see. So we'll have Bob weld this stuff up for us. But I think this might be our, uh, our power probe. All right, so what are you missing? You are missing power cells. You are going to need... So did they change that? Didn't that used to... Didn't large... Small grid large reactors, didn't those used to require 100 reactor components? They're 95 now? I could swear those used to require... Uh... Like, it's like 100 reactor components and like one or two superconductors or something. I don't remember. Okay, so we need... It's going to be those. Uh, so, let's head in for a second. Since we are here, we're going to do... What do I need? Ten of those? Uh, I'm actually going to need a bunch. I'm, I'm planning on throwing more batteries on board. We've got eight batteries already. I'm probably going to triple the number of batteries. Uh, we'll worry about that later. Let's just get the reactors on. Get the reactors and generators up and running. Uh, reactor cores. I need four, uh, just shy of 400 of those. What are you using? You're using silver. How much silver do I have? I need roughly 2k silver. Okay, I've got I've got the silver that I need. All right, so that gets us most of our reactor room. The only thing left now is our jump drive. And we've got we've got areas where we have negative space or the potential for negative space. And I'm thinking we're gonna integrate the jump drive into those. Because I want at least two jump drives. Ideally I'd like to have four. Um, especially given the amount of power that we're looking to be able to put out with this thing. Because I mean we've got four large reactors and ten of the uh, the hydrogen engines. That's gonna be a, that's gonna be a pretty beefy power output. I think what we're gonna do is set up the automatic LCD script. I may actually put that in the engineering area as well. Yeah. We're loaded up. I want to check what the power output on those are because I want to. I think that the small grid large reactors are like thirty or forty megawatts. Fourteen point seven five megawatts. Yeah, they've really readjusted this stuff. Okay. Ah, uh, so that's going to be. 1.5 per 2, 3, 6, carry the 1, 56, 59, so just shy of 60, plus another 5 megawatts. So we've got like 64 megawatts of potential power off of this ship. So that should be enough to power shields, that should be enough to power propulsion and weapons. And that's not counting, you know, whatever we we put into the battery, uh, into the battery banks as well. So I think we're going to be pretty good for materials. You are missing motors, reactor components, obviously. So let's go queue up a couple hundred motors. 
I don't think we have them anywhere in inventory. I think we are actually not. Yep. So let's go like 500 motors. Those are, what do I need? 2,500 nickel? I think I have that. I've, I'm fairly sure I have. Yeah. <laughs> We've got more than what we need for this stuff. Nickel and iron? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay. What do you guys need? You need just thruster components, so I'm not going to worry about you guys for right now. You are mostly done. It's really weird that you guys are spreading. All right. Anyway. Okay. So I think that is going to be that. These will eventually be airtight when those thrusters are done. Did I just melt those? No. It's just the way it's looking. Okay. And I'm thinking... Let's go... Oh, I could do transparent LCDs so that we could see the back of this, but I think I'm going to actually go with the uh, the traditional LCDs. Five by five. Your large grid only, unfortunately. It's really sad that they took the LCDs off of... Uh, the combined menu. It's the small grid wide look like. Oh, hello. Yeah, you're a little. That'd be awesome if I could get that to work. If that fit with the, the way that the, uh, the the two reactors. Man, that would actually be kind of cool. All right, so that's not gonna work for us. Yeah, that's ugly. I'm like... <sighs> okay, so let's go... I mean, I could probably... Get... Well, actually, what's the text panel look like? How big is that? Oh, look at you. You actually... I need into your plate. So I go one, two... At six, that would give me twelve. So I could have right and left reactors on one. Oh, I'd have right reactors on one, left on the other. I could do shield output. Yeah, so I can actually get quite a bit of information in here. All right, so I need interior plates. Let's grab some interior plates. Yes, I know I can get them out there, but I can also get free, free O2 in here. So uh, we'll grab a hundred of those because we can. All right. Okay, so with that being true, let's just go ahead and load this up. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do all of these or not. Yeah, I should grab one of the. Uh, I've got a, a one of the old LCD, like multiple LCD script or not scripts but uh, blocks so i can do like 45s and such those might actually be kind of cool i thought i loaded that too okay i think i'm gonna have to add another mod i think we're gonna do the um uh, the lcd more i think it's called or more lcds mod um they basically have lcds mounted on like two by one ramp tops and bottoms uh 45 tops and bottoms it's like yeah it's it's crazy and we can actually end up building 
a wraparound display here, which I think would look pretty cool. Because if we did the 2x1 top, the small portion, LCD mounted here and here, you know, you'd be able to walk in and have all of your information wrapped around you. So I think that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and get rid of you, get rid of you. And I may do the 45s on the top. So let's see what this looks like. What are you missing? You're missing just motors. You're finishing stuff up. You're at 20, you're at 50. And you guys are all just missing motors. Okay, let's see how much time we have. Let me turn that off. I want to see how much time we have on the grid first off. That's seven hours of power, which is good. Just go ahead and charge up while we're sitting here. Because once we have the uh, the reactors and everything online, um, I'm thinking we'll go ahead and turn the, the O2 systems on. Get all of this stuff filled and maybe close up this area. Right, since, since Bob is a little busy, let's go ahead and get this welded up. Sounds like Bob is finishing up his stuff. And this way you can you get a good idea what it's going to look like. Go ahead and turn that on. Stand up. Yeah, I'm kind of liking the way that that turned out. So I want to change the paint job on it though. I want you to be sci-fi armor. And I think we were going to go a little bit more. Uh... Oh, let's go. Let's go white sci-fi armor, see what that looks like. Kinda liking that, actually. Let's see how that all looks. Let's see what it looks like when it's done. And yes, I know I'm gonna need to repaint the the stuff up here. Okay, so when we come in, yeah, I'm liking that. I like that, and I will probably change this stuff. Oh, let's do. I want to keep it this. I, I can't. I kind of want to keep it that sand color. Let's see what that looks like in carbon fiber. Oh. How's that look? We're just gonna run down the hall here. Let's see. When you come in, hmm, not a huge fan of that. All right, let's see what we got here. So I'm thinking, obviously, we're going to do something like that, except we need to use the appropriate color. There we go. Do it on either side. Um, if we're going to have an overhead there, Over. All right. Now let's look at the rest of the floor panels here. We could just do basic clean armor, maybe. That could be interesting. Let's 
gets rid of the the grime and the lines there. Yeah, it's your engineering area. You want it to be clean. Not that I think I've ever seen an engineering space that was actually clean. Not like not like that kind of clean. I mean, you don't even get that even coming out of a factory. <laughs> right, let's see what that looks like though. Yeah, that could work. That might work. Might have to change the color up. Uh, the only other thing that I could possibly retro might be interesting. Oh, it's gotten chunky. That is an ugly color. I like the... I think I like that design though. For the floor. I think we may have found our floor. I have to change that color up. Uh, let's go... Let's go with the off-white maybe? Yeah, I think the off-white's gonna be good because that's like a bare metal. Yeah, I'm liking that much better. Much better. I mean, that, that goldish paint is not bad. Um, I think my issue with it is that it doesn't have any wear and tear on it. So if we go with this for our floor, see, and I, I like the fact that this has what looks like vents and stuff cut into it. I think that's I think that's a really good look, honestly. All right, let me know what you guys think. Throw it down in the comment section. Uh, if you have color suggestions, add those in as well. What I may do is for you guys. Let's. I'm wondering what this looks like if we do it that. Oh, I kind of like that actually. And then we just leave some of this. Okay, so over here it's going to be the bright white sci-fi armor. Yeah, okay. And we'll do this to go from there. Okay, so let's oh, yeah, we need to get you guys painted again, don't we? And you are the dusty armor. Okay, you know what? I need to try this. I have to try it. I'm sorry. I know. It's horrible. Okay, it just paints it yellow. It's kind of anticlimactic, actually. <laughs> that is uh, rather anticlimactic. Of course, I, I'm kind of wanting to rip these out and paint all of the uh, underlying stuff back there in that hazard stripe. Which I think we're going to do, but I'm going to do off camera. Uh, I think we have completed our uh, engine room here. We've got power on the grid, so as long as I have... Alright, let's grab a little bit of uranium. We're going to get this thing... Don't worry. We should have quite a bit. Let's grab, we've got what, four there? So let's grab 800. That will be 200 per reactor. 
Now, normally I would actually go ahead and go through the process of piping all this into the network, but I want to get these online sooner rather than later. Really? Ah, oh, because you're not piped into the... Okay. Let's try that again. And all of you guys should now be online. All right, so we have a ridiculous amount of power on board. Yeah, 106 days just idling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's going to do it for us today. I want to thank you all for stopping and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, you know the routine. Hit those likes, subscribe, share with your friends, spam your enemies. <laughs> if you do have any questions or comments, feel free to throw those down in the comment section. That's what it's there for, and I always enjoy a good conversation, even if it's uh, criticism. <laughs> oh, anyway. I am going to get out of here. I want to thank you all for stopping in. Ah, it's been a hell of a day. And it's just Monday. Ah, all right. Let's get out of here. I hope you all have a fantastic day.